Hello, everybody. Welcome to The Films That Shaped Us. This is a brand new show that I'm doing uh, about the films that were formidable for us, whether it was in our youth, whether it was as adults. Uh, I just wanted to talk to some of my friends, some of my creative uh, collaborators over the years, actors that I've worked with, uh, directors, musicians, you know, you name it, uh, and people I've met who appreciate film as much as I do. So, uh, on today's episode, we have a very good friend of mine who I met at uh, Otterbein University. We were both under in the theater program. So please welcome Ethan Walker. Ethan. Hello. Hey. How are you, my friend? Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, for I'm sure. Great. It's so good to see your face. It's been yes. way too long, man. I know. I know. I saw you briefly a, a couple months, couple few months ago, right? When was that? That was that was at um yeah. that was at uh, at Lincoln. uh Lincoln's house yeah yeah for like a, a few hours and yeah it, it was, was like... great it was great but I was so happy to see your face I didn't know you were gonna be there so it was it was such a oh I know yeah <laughs> I didn't know you were coming either yeah you like you and Jeremy walked in I was like oh my god it was amazing <laughs> yeah it was amazing can't wait yeah the day that we can all actually be back together I know oh, it's gonna be great do theater and shit you know. <laughs> God, you yeah. started, dude. But you've been doing some cool stuff. You've been directing a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. I want you to come out and direct something soon. Oh yeah, that would be that would be a dream. We gotta we gotta yeah we gotta think about that. Um, we'll talk about that. yeah no we'll talk about that later yeah. Um, but <laughs> yes, yeah, so you've you've had a couple music videos come out which I've been very impressed by. Mm -hmm. The one you did with Noah Thank like. You made me like so emotional that was like insane um yeah that most most of the props for that to noah he like yeah i mean the song is incredible like his performance was astounding and yeah. then ben woods like scudly camera the dude that was doing like the lighting and the shooting and stuff like he crushed it too like yeah it was such a it was such an awesome like collaborative experience and then just working on like that song with like those lyrics like the lyrics are so vibrant and like yes like such good imagery like it was so it was i was so happy he did a a give on song because i've really liked i've really enjoyed give on for the for the past few months um yeah he's incredible <laughs> so i i was weak like wait, his voice is like in my range like his songs are like in my range they are they're lower his voice is so unique that any time that I try to replicate it though, or like do my own version of it, I just like I judge the crap out of myself. Yeah, I'm like, like I, I feel like KBR. sometimes <laughs> I do like I do these like piano covers, and like sometimes I'll like I'll like spend hours just like going through different songs, trying different things, and I just never end up publishing anything because I'm like because I'm like yeah. I don't sound like these people. Like what am I trying to do? You know, like it's yeah, it can be very. I, I feel the same way. Yeah. So your piano playing has gotten really good. Like, Thank you. I you've mean, been I'm practicing just, a lot, huh? I'm just doing chords mainly, um, but chords can be deceiving. Chords can. Make, um, what 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 did you say? I was saying you get some riffs in in there and stuff. Like you a little you, bit. You get yeah. a little de dexterous with it. Dexterous <laughs> is that word? Am am a dexterous? Am a dexterous? <laughs> I don't know. Say, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, Someone's gonna be in the comments like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> um, <laughs> when do we talk about movies? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't care about your guys' personal life. Um, but <laughs> anyway, so yeah. If you don't care about our personal lives, you shouldn't be listening, probably. I mean, yeah, true. The, uh, and the only people who will be listening are like our friends anyway, so. Um, people who care about our personal lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's, yeah, let's dive in. Uh, you want to talk about some movies? I want to talk about some movies. Uh, so yeah, let's just let's just get the ball rolling. Um, what were was a movie or a couple movies that were formidable for you? Or so when you like for, yeah formal formative I don't know. But when you first like told me about this idea and like told me that you wanted to like have me on the show and stuff, I was I just started thinking about it and like the first things that that came to mind um were like old movies that I watched all the time like as a kid it was like The Incredibles it was oh, the original like Spider-Man trilogy it was the Dark Knight trilogy and like Pirates of the Caribbean I had this really like visceral memory 
of coming home from seeing Pirates of the Caribbean. I think it was, it was, is the third one the one with the Kraken? Uh, is it, I think it's the second and third one, if I'm not mistaken. I, it was like, I think, I think it was the third one. Cause isn't there like the, the Kraken comes and like takes the shit. I don't know. I haven't seen it in forever. Isn't that the second one? But it might be. Because be. the second one ends with the Kraken taking the ship. And then the third one starts with like Jack Sparrow on that like weird Island with like, like five of him or whatever. Um, You're right. You're right. I think, yeah. So it must've been the second one then. But I mean, anyway, it's not even about the movie necessarily. It's just like, I remember going to see it and then like coming home and like, I was, I mean, I was probably like seven or eight when I first saw it. So like just running to the woods immediately, like finding a stick and pretending it was a sword and like yes. being Jack Spencer. I just like, my, my imagination was always, always like super hyperactive as a kid. Like I would always wear like superhero costumes everywhere I went, like spider-man cost like to school to the grocery store like to my brother's basketball football games and stuff yeah i was always like pretending to be a superhero because i loved them yeah and when i thought pirates of the caribbean i like wanted to be jack sparrow and like that was the first time i remember being like holy shit like that's what i want to do like i want to yeah i want to do that i want to well i want to be able to just like play and pretend to be a pirate like fucking johnny depp johnny depp in that first movie is I he definitely got worse as the franchise progressed, um, but like in in the fifth one, it was just self parody. But um, in in that first movie, the fact that there are five movies. I mean, that first movie you forget like when you go back and watch that first movie, he's so subtle, he's so nuanced. Like all of his little like yeah. you know all of his little comedic jabs and little side you know like comments and stuff they're so calculated and 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 like funny but also i feel like the the character of jack sparrow is is treated much more seriously in that first film um which which like kind of like i feel like the 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 other characters in the show like treat him much more seriously like he's like this legend he's like this iconic like he's just fucking he's so free and like so himself and just such a goofball and uh like i feel like the ability to find that freedom like as an actor to be able to do and just play and and you know live in that world like you have to do so much prep work in order to get right. to that point of, to be like, comfortable yes you know? be comfortable yeah. making those choices and, and uh so like i i remember just like watching him and being like he's just like there's so much joy in his acting and like in that in that movie like you could just tell but I mean, the character and like Johnny Depp's performance, like both just show so much joy. Well, he was, and I remember he as was a kid, I was like, this yeah, is amazing. He was nominated for an Oscar for that first film. People forget that. Was he really? He really was. Oh, damn. Yeah. I know that. No, it's that's that's that seems. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> weird, right? <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> It's like, like such a, I don't remember the last time, like how uh, franchise movies, I feel like aren't frequently put up for Oscars. Or well, they're starting to now. We're in a, we're in an era where, where that is starting to happen more and more because Black Panther was a big deal. Right. Okay. Yeah, Joker was kind of taking over. Um, although, although, you know, of course, Joker is, feels like an independent film. It just. Is it technically franchise? Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, well, yeah, well, not a joke, fran- so. I mean, not a franchise, but Warner Brothers, like it was Warner Brothers. That's a huge studio, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, I think like Todd Phillips just killed that movie. Like the the and so if we're talking about movies that have been formidable lately, like Joker was definitely one of them. Because also when I was a kid, like Dark Knight, like the original Dark Knight. And like Heath Ledger's performance as Joker, like for the same reasons as Johnny, De- like with Johnny Depp's freedom, like Heath Ledger's freedom as Joker in like the opposite direction were also incredibly inspiring. And like, just it it showed, like I had never seen anything like that before. Like I'd never seen anything like Jack Sparrow before on film. I'd never seen anything oh, like- So Heath I'm Ledger's gathering Joker. that, I'm gathering that as an actor, you're often inspired by like, 
when an actor is so comfortable in something that they can just run free and make and make any choice that they want like that's something that you you gravitate yeah to. yeah absolutely because i think in when something that like fascinated me so much about like joker about like todd phillips's joker is their like their camera like the way that they shot it was they just put two cameras in a room and it was just like go ahead joaquin like whatever you do like i mean that is essentially he, how they filmed a lot of that movie yeah that, no yeah that's what i'm saying like that was pretty much like their primary shooting style and like joaquin killed it because he had the exact same comfortability and freedom that like these other two dudes had because like prepare 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 yeah because that's that. amazing though because like when you watch yeah when you watch the movie it feels like every shot is so calculated you know what i mean yeah so to know right? that they were just sort of on the fly like okay i'm just gonna that means that they're so good at what they do that they can just oh my god yeah, yeah. and i mean like, yeah, on a whim just adjust and and like react on one another and like the, that to be in a in a production that has that like open and willing of a collaborative like environment and atmosphere to it like whatever todd phillips did to to bring that environment together like i want to i well, want to read his book with, i've read like, a little bit they said that they like he kept the set like really light sort of like he does on his comedies you know he just kept mm -hmm. it really you know calm really chill you know yeah. and apparently that was also like that was the environment that Joaquin needed to be able to go where he went. He needed it to be light because if it had been even darker, like that's crazy. That's such a dark yeah. role, you know, it, it's know. so in the wrong hands that could, that could like fucking act her up, you know, but Joaquin it, it did. It fucking led her up. Like, <laughs> well, well, if, for different reasons, he took it, he took it on his own. I would, like, say, he kinda, I would say there's a lot that's come out recently about how, him Heath Ledger in the Dark Knight was not that was the Joker was not really the issue. The issue was that he was doing all these drugs and other stuff on the side. The Joker, the yeah. Joker stuff was actually a like a salvation for him. It was like it was like freedom. Like an outlet. Yeah. Yeah, like an outlet. Yeah. And so some people I mean, that, that makes sense. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say that some people close to him in recent years have just said that like saying that the joker killed him is like not that's not true um oh i didn't realize that yeah i i appreciate you correcting me on that because i yeah, know for sure he like i know he was like in a hotel room for like three months just like preparing for it and like keeping the journal and doing that right. kind of like you know the stories that we always hear and so like it for i made the assumption that like joker led him to to drugs like that mm, right like, fucked right. up a psyche of mind of a headspace like i would i i would imagine like be with as with as vivid as an imagination as i would expect that these like you know household names actors like have it it would be really difficult to like not allow that dark place to affect your personal life and so right. i feel like right. drugs could have been like a negative salvation for him you know, I mean, who knows? It's all speculation. Yeah. No, I know. We're just two dudes who don't know anything yeah. about the like, <laughs> about shit. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, that's like, and I think, like, to, to your point earlier, like, I'm definitely gravitated towards roles where, like, actors are able to experience, like, that comfortability and freedom. But, like, I also love how drastic these characters are. Like, Joker you know jack sparrow is pretty crazy like in leo is like leonardo dicaprio is probably my favorite actor because every role that he plays is so fucking like yeah it's such I a mean, he, he, role. that guy's the king of bold choices like you cannot like you can never discount him yeah. even if you don't think he's the best actor ever you cannot discount his willingness to just go there you know yeah exactly his, yeah, his commitment but like also his like he's he's one of the most like free and comfortable actors too and and playing these roles that like they're not like your average people like he's playing you know i mean you can name off the list of people that he's played and it's like they're not these average people they're like these insane off the wall characters that he has to 
make these huge choices to but like does it so comfortably and so freely that it's believable like yeah well it's like the thing it's like that thing that one of our professors talks about about like you can make any choice that you want as long as you can support it you know yeah Um, as long as it's rooted in truth yeah yeah so you can you know scream your fucking face off till the cows come home if it if it's supported, you know, like if you can right. back that shit up, then do it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think those, like those superhero movies are, are definitely like my favorite genre in general of, of movie. Um, and I don't, I don't know why that is. Like, I've been trying to rack my brain, like figuring no, well, out like, why am I so. It's exciting. It's really exciting. I mean, I remember like when, I still to this day have never been more excited for a movie than The Dark Knight Rises. When The Dark Knight Rises was coming out, oh, dude, my God. (laughs) Like, like I thought it was, I thought it was Christmas. It was was Christmas times 50. Dude, I know. I was going to say, remember that shooting in Aurora, Colorado, like on opening night of the movie and everybody was like, do we go? And I I just remember like me and my friends being like, yeah, we're still, yes, we yeah, go. I know. <laughs> like, I, know. And I, I think now, nowadays, my reaction would have been different, but I was like 14 then. So I didn't, you know. Oh, when, yeah. Yeah. When but you're 14, it's like, oh, I'm invincible. So like, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> I remember we wore Batman masks. Like we, we got like these plastic Batman masks <laughs> and went to the movie theater. And I grew up in Aurora, Ohio. Like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, no. It was bad. Yeah, we well, had we had cops like in the movie theater, like you yeah. know, just making sure that everything was okay. Right. And like me and my friends were just like so hyped for the movie, and also we're you know we were twelve, so like we didn't understand or register like the the weight of like the situation that happened. So we're like, let's put Batman masks on and like go to this movie and like have a great time. And the cops were like, you gotta take those masks off. You gotta leave them outside. Like well, that <laughs> how was we were. Right. And you, you, you have seen Tenet, right? Oh, yeah. So that's why I, and I, I actually saw the opening scene a year ago in front of Rise of Skywalker in IMAX. They showed the opening for Tenet. The, uh, the scene in the, in, in the, the opera, opera house. house. In the opera house. And um, I remember like, when those when those guys it almost made paying a ticket for that movie worth it um and it it um (laughs) like when when those like hooded like thugs come out and they start shoving the orchestra people i'm like i was like is no one making a comment about the aurora shooting like because he like was, you know, it's a shooting in a theater and no yeah. one, like, it was like a big deal when that happened. So I was like. For sure. It, and that's his, like, uh, well, he had, I mean, he had a, I, yeah, I wonder, it pro- I don't know. Because like, his, I, mean, I feel like he's like, one of those guys like, that like, will like put Easter eggs of like old movies into his new movies and stuff. Like, I feel like yeah. he's one of those guys that like, likes the subliminal connective tissue. Yeah. That like nobody really picks up on. <laughs> like, I mean, if he's making a commentary on that, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, but but like, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, or or it could have just been. I mean, stuff like that. Also, though, like hooded men with guns. That's very part of the Nolan aesthetic. So, I mean, like, yeah, true. It could it could, it like, could have just been that. But also, he's so smart. So yeah, like, but like, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I was like, fuck it. Like, let's go with the theory that he was. Like, let's say that he was making a nod to the shooting. Like, he, it's a great time to do it. Like, the, there, you know, before like the pandemic started, like shootings around the country were up and up and up and up and like higher than they've ever been. So it's very possible that he could have been just like hitting back on it and being like, yo, don't forget, this is a, this is still an issue that we got to deal yeah. with. I'm yeah. just like reminding you briefly that this these things still happen. But like we don't have superheroes to to fix it. Like we gotta handle this shit on our own. Right. You know? 
it could be that it very it very well could be that um what did you think of tenet yeah no we can talk about that um i and i i've actually like i've watched it with some like like over like the internet with like friends and stuff and like Mm -hmm. their reactions for the most part have been like pretty mixed um Mm -hmm. i really like the movie a lot um yeah i i understand all the issues that people have said though they're like in terms of in terms of like plot plot lines like like the lack of the lack of characterization the uh you know how the storyline itself aside from the science is not particularly interesting um yeah how you know the dialogue is very cryptic and very uh (laughs) (laughs) for i remember like my brother and i like drove an hour and a half or something to go to myrtle beach because it was like the only the only theater that was open yeah. so we drive an hour and a half down there and then we sit through this like two and a half hour movie and the whole time hour. i'm just like i'm just like gawking at this screen while my brother is just sitting there like what like trying to decipher like everything that was going on and we like walked out of it and my brother was pissed he was like i he was like, what the fuck happened? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> he was like, explain to me what we just watched. And I was like, don't think about it too much. Like, it's fine. <laughs> like, yeah, because on- It's just cool. Like, <laughs> like I, on first viewing, uh, yeah, there were there, like, I would say ha- about halfway, half of the movie, I was like, very like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure this shit out. You know, like, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna try. And then about halfway through, I was like, I, I can't. I was like, I'm, I Can't just gotta, it. I just gotta enjoy it, and then I enjoyed it. But then I've seen it a few times since, and I think that it really, once you see it a few times, it is much easier to understand. Um, yeah, which I know is not like the best thing to say, because because I know um, I know a movie shouldn't necessarily need like so many viewings. Um, well, I disagree though. Like, I think, I think Nolan's one of those guys, like, I mean, he's, you know, Inception, like, help me, help me name some of his like weirder, like trippy movies. It's obviously like uh, Inception. Too. Yeah. He uh, has Prestige, the Prestige. Um, yeah. The Prestige. Like he, he's known for like these kind of like weird puzzle, like mind bending movies. And so, well, so here's, here's a theory, right? <laughs> right now like it was released during the pandemic right so like most theaters are closed like most people aren't going to be able to go out and see it or right. want to go out and see it because they're afraid so like the few people that do i wonder if he was like hoping and like kind of knew that like the real people who like came out to see this movie were like i got to go see that again so like he was like planning on selling multiple tickets like per person to get like to help with the box office or the budget well, i think that was his plan because yeah that was his plan pre-pandemic yeah um yeah yeah that's what i think because he was like ah yeah because well i mean i don't know if you've been following like some of his like recent comments but he's been a little he's been a little dick he's been a little he's kind of been a little really? dick about things I'm, I'm gonna be honest um like about time yeah, because like it didn't, you know, it didn't perform as well as it should have. And like one of right. the one of the reasons that, and obviously it didn't perform as well as it should have, you released a movie in a pandemic. And so it's like <laughs> on you, you know, you were the one who was yeah. like, no, this has to be in theaters. It has to be right now, you know, which is like. It did have to be on IMAX. No, sure. yeah, but we could have waited. Like, we could have waited. Right now, not. Nah. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. What, um, what's he been saying? Just like, well, you know how Warner Brothers did that, or HBO Max did that thing where they're like, we're going to release all of the Warner Brothers um, theatrical releases on HBO Max Mm -hmm. as well as in theaters. Mm -hmm. That took a lot of filmmakers off, including Nolan. And I don't mind that he was pissed off. I think he has the right to be pissed off. I just think that some of his comments, like he was like, he was like, we woke up 
thought we thinking we were working for the best movie studio in the world only to learn we were working for the worst streaming service <laughs> oh my god it's just like petty Damn. it's petty yeah and, just and like I, you don't need to say that right now and and also like one of the reasons that this move happened was because of you was because you tried yeah. to release a movie in the middle of a pandemic um for sure have you seen wonder woman by the way oh yeah yeah i yeah. haven't seen it yet did i watch it i'm sure you've heard a lot of things about it. i have heard a lot of things <laughs> i actually kind of enjoyed it but i but i like everything is again like similar to tenant like all the complaints i totally get I totally understand. yeah <laughs> um i just i was just entertained by a lot of it um but yeah. i yeah but like it's not it's not like good you know <laughs> like it's not it's not hey, like man. a good movie um which no, but it's just a, it, i know but it's it's disappointing because uh the first wonder woman was really good um so it was it was it really was. good um yeah. and, well dc i've been hearing a lot about this one not so much like not worth the watch not anywhere are, as good as the first like, you know you know the the hate for this movie it's it's ringing a bell it's ringing a last jedi bell for me um and how so well because when the last jedi came out everybody hated it not everybody like i love that movie but like so many people yeah so many people despised it and turned on star wars and turned on ryan johnson just like completely and just for the same right? yeah just for just you. because they didn't like one movie and that's sort of happening with patty jenkins and, and wonder woman which is sad because i think that she's a really good director i think that the problems with the movie are script issues um and mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's all like what it comes down to a lot of the time. Like I feel like bad like if you if you have a bad script, like you can't you can't polish a turd. Like <laughs> like that's I think writing like the writing of movies is honestly like one of the most enticing parts, probably the most. Like the dialogue and the plot and like the story and stuff, like that's what gets me so hyped. Like well, yeah, that's I, why I wasn't like as big on the like, transformers and you know like those big movies and stuff because like they're all just kind of like michael bay is just like explosions no, and here I mean, we go the, and here's the only people who are let's be honest the only people who are really into transformers are, are basic bitches let's 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 be real <laughs> yeah, i'm saying that's what i'm saying um yeah yeah but i i'm hopeful for the future of dc i mean i always am i'm like the one who's always hopeful but i one of the reasons i am is because they, they've got some potentially cool stuff coming out. For one, they have the new Robert Pattinson Batman, which Dude. is going, it's going to be amazing. Um, I, it's going to be so good. Yeah. It's going to be so good. Because it's know, like everybody is like already casting it off. And I hate that. They are? I mean, I've seen a lot of people. I mean, at least a lot of the people that I talk to are like, eh, it's Robert Pattinson. Like, it's going to be weird. It's going to be so emotional and dark. I'm just like, what are you talking? It's Batman. It's Batman. Of course, it's gonna be dark and, and emotional. emotional. Don't you want that in a Batman <laughs> movie? I do. <laughs> oh, dude, I yeah. was like, I've, I've seen like on Twitter, everybody's just like, oh my god, Rob, Rob Pat and Eyeshadow. Like, yes, let's get it. An entire movie of Rob Pat and Eyeshadow. Dude. I think it's gonna be fantastic. Well, it's it's um Matt Reeves who did um, the last two Planet of the Apes prequels, which are, which are excellent. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, have you seen, have you seen the, the new trilogy, the new Planet of the Apes trilogy? I haven't, no. I watched, I watched Planet of the Apes for the first time last year. I think I watched like the first, is it, I think I watched the first two movies. I didn't even get through, like we didn't even watch all of them. Oh, Rise and Dawn? yes yeah yeah but i can't speak too like i can't speak too well on them because i only saw them once okay yeah and i'm like very high but yeah for sure but he was he was an he's an excellent 
director. And so I'm really super excited to see what he does. Um, Dude, I think if DC just like accepted that, like they're the angstier comic book series or the comic book company or whatever, like their movies would be so much better. If they just like sunk into like the darker, like more sadistic, like twisted stuff, I, I think would, they could make a killing off of that. I would say yes and no, because yes, I, I would say yes, because yeah, some of their more, more successful films have been on the darker side. You look at the Nolan trilogy, you look at Joker, mm -hmm. um, but yeah. those are those are like standalone stuff. And yeah, when you look at the DCEU, like the extended universe, the stuff that has worked has been, uh, for the most part, lighter stuff, like Wonder Woman and Shazam. Um, yeah, oh, I never saw Shazam. Shazam is actually quite good. Um, I actually yeah, really enjoyed good. that movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so I would say, but like, they need to figure out. But they need to figure out. Okay, our standalone movies that aren't related to anything are going to be this. Our extended mm -hmm. universe movies are going to be this. That's what they need to figure out because they they clearly don't have a clear vision on either. So yeah, yeah. But I think it's so hard to like, it's so hard to do that right now because Marvel is just like killing it with like the light fun. Like every Marvel movie is like, like they've, they've gotten this thing down to a science of like how to write a good superhero script, like for these types of characters. I know. And if DC tries to like copy that format or like do the same type of thing, I feel like people would just see right through it and be like, no, nah, this ain't you. Like right. it could like, I don't know. I, and this could just me being like a picky bitch. But I think like, if DC was just to be like, all right, Marvel has found like a like crazy success doing it this way. We're going to try it this way and go like the complete opposite direction that Marvel did and like do the anti-heroes and like, you know, the Batman, the angstier stuff, like the yeah. darker, like, the, like DC, even, like, what's up? DC Black. Have you heard of that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like if they just went that route with it. Like, I think it would it would put this, like, crazy juxtaposition up against Marvel. And then you get all of these, like, all of these people, especially right now, who are going, like, everybody's going through it right now. Like, we, I would love to see a superhero, like, be going through it and still yeah. be, like, still thrive. Like, that would be dope. Because, like, I, I, and I love all of the Marvel movies, of course, but, like, watching, like, I, I want to see, Right now, the Marvel movie that I want to see is Fat Thor. Like, I want to see Fat Thor just, like, going through it, like, in quarantine, but, like, still successful. Because I can't, I can't connect to the other stuff right now. It's just not how I feel. Right. <laughs> when, and you one thing, I mean? like, I love Marvel, too, but, and I wouldn't say this about all of their movies, but a big problem I have with some of their movies is that, you know, you watch these cool action scenes, but you're like, there's no stakes. You know what I mean? Like they're yeah. not like they're not gonna die. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, and that was like the whole civil war battle. <laughs> I mean, Civil War is is actually one of my favorite Marvel movies, but not for not for that scene though. Not for that scene. Uh, like, oh yeah, no, I know. That because I mean that scene, I was like, ah, they're like they're fighting, like ah. And they're like gonna, with each other, gonna, and like, like, I'm gonna kill you. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. like, no, you're not. Like, we, yeah. we all need you guys for the game. Like, we, you, you all gotta be around. We got much bigger fish to fry. Like, <laughs> just shit together, guys. Yeah. But yeah, no. Because I've, and that's, that's the thing that I love about like the standalone DC stuff is they all, all of the stakes are like through the roof. Like, the like fucking. Oh, and those, Nolan's, like, in those Nolan like, movies? Really oh my God. Like, do you, the city could like explode at any moment, like in all of those movies. There's not, there's not a, se okay, okay. No, there's not a second of like, eh, everything is gonna be fine. Like, it's always like the city's gonna explode. I'm gonna lose the love of my life. I'm gonna die. <laughs> like, like I'm gonna, you know, lose my mind to like dangerous chemicals. Like, there's so many, you know, <laughs> there's like so many awesome. different, yeah. Awesome. Nolan, yeah, Nolan is, right. uh, it'll be interesting to see what, I really hope that he 
goes small for his next film because he's been he's been playing a lot with these with these large canvases recently um which is cool but like crap Boeing 747. I know. <laughs> <It's> airport. <laughs> and that and that final 30 minutes in that like huge like military like that I mean that's gotta be one of the so much money. That's gotta be one of the largest action sequences ever filmed. Ever. Oh for yeah. sure. For sure. It's such a big compound. And they like I'm isn't wasn't I don't know if well, I know the whole thing wasn't practical, but like most of it, they did practically. Like, I don't know what yeah. they did with like the building at the end, when it like explodes and crashes down. Like, I don't know if that was practical. Probably wasn't. I think it was. It could have been. No, I think it was. It probably was. They did. They did as much practical as they could, as he always does. But they. Yeah. Like I think they said that in total, there were about two hundred and fifty. CGI shots in the entire movie, which is less than most romantic comedies. <laughs> that's like that's when you think about how many shots are in a movie, and there are only 250 that featured CGI. That's insane, dude. I, if yeah. I was a <laughs> yeah, like and that's that's I think the thing that was like so exciting for me watching Tenet was like they really did this shit like the actors like had to learn how to fight in reverse like they had to learn how to repel down this building like they had to learn how to drive this car backwards quickly like they they were really doing this shit like i mean they probably didn't drive the car i'm sure that was a driver well no no i i heard that they did drive the car i think robert pattinson said that he did drive the car really yeah which is, <laughs> just like, how fucking fun would that be, dude? Like, to mean, he, be, said like was, he said that it wasn't fun and he was terrified, but. <laughs> Robert Pattinson, dude, of course he's going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, true. Um, but back to your point about like the Batman and Rob, Robert Pattinson and people being like, oh, it's Robert Pattinson. I hate that like nobody knows that he's like this in fucking amazing actor. Like, dude. <laughs> It's because they just like curse him on Twilight. Like it I was like I'm, his. I'm like, have you paid attention to anything he's done for the last ten years? Like I know they crucify him. It's dumb because like it's, he's. It's not like he hasn't been around. He's been around. Like he's been doing shit. Like all the time. It's just yeah. smaller. Like it's yeah. just not Twilight series. Like he's doing independent films intentionally because he hated like having that huge spotlight so young. And he was like, I, I don't even know what I'm doing yet. Like, I'm going to go yeah. figure out how to act. Like, I'm going to go figure this thing out. So he's just working on a shit ton of, like, small indie, like, small budget indie films and, like, doing this dark ass stuff. Like, did you see Good Time? Yeah, of course. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I loved it. Like, I, like he's doing all of these, like, tiny, like, smaller movies. And then he gets called back in for like inception obviously or not inception sorry for yeah. tenant yeah and he was like all right yeah but he was still like he had a big role but he was like the supporting role but now he's batman and like he's working his way back up to like okay i'm ready for like stardom again like not that it ever really like left him you know but like yeah but he's like i, I have think- reached enough maturity that i could i can handle this now yeah yeah which like I think speaks to his artistry. Like he's he's not trying to do it for like like I mean from what I can see from like you know interviews and shit. Like he's not really in it for like the fame and the money and stuff. Like yeah. he's just like trying to tell stories and trying to do it right. Yeah, which is why I respect him. Like well, so I mean much. him and him and the lighthouse was like was like incredible. Um, dude, that movie was sick. Oh my god, I love that movie. I love that movie. <laughs> um didn't we were you were you there when we well, were watching not, in the room i was not there um but i think i i think I, I either came like right before or like right after it was like something like that um yeah, i remember you being like in the is somewhere around it it must have been it must have been right after because i'm sure we were talking about it yeah and i remember it yeah because you guys you guys seemed like really fucked up about it and i was like okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's like, right because it was like it was us and i think hannah was there and we were watching and i remember we were just like whoa what yeah. do we what do we do now <laughs> he came in the room we were just like glassy eyed like hey cam like <laughs> yeah. i was like oh post uh, post lighthouse i see but <laughs> yeah it was the same feeling like after parasite just like that whole like i was just I, that's whoa. literally what i was thinking i was just thinking that um because i saw it i saw that with lincoln in, in a theater and we oh i miss going to the theater and we but we literally so we were silent we were like silent for a little right and then and then lincoln was like that was one of the best movies i've ever seen and i was like <laughs> i i think me as well <laughs> yeah dude parasite oh my god like deserve yeah, honestly, everything that, it got. that that goes a little bit with that's a movie that definitely shaped me a little bit just in terms of like because i i've always enjoyed foreign films but when i watched parasite i was like i was like i've been missing out i've been like in, yeah i've been like unintentionally like blinding myself from the wonder of foreign cinema you know dude me too yeah and the the only other like foreign film that I had seen before Parasite was Roma because you recommended it to me. Oh, okay. like okay. And Roma was gorgeous and amazing and incredible, but completely different. Like, <laughs> and so I saw Parasite. I saw Parasite and was like, I gotta watch Snowpiercer. So I went and watched Snowpiercer. That was made obviously like it's in English and stuff, but I and honestly I haven't been doing anywhere near as good of a job as I should at, like seeking out like incredible foreign films like that because parasite i was like this is incredible i got to do this more often and it got me into subtitles like <laughs> i never watched anything with subtitles now i watch everything with subtitles oh yeah but like i'm still searching for a ton of like foreign films so if you have suggestions yeah like no, i have a couple actually do you um do you have amazon prime mm -hmm. okay there's a great foreign film great uh is it polish I, it might be Polish, um, but it's called Cold War. Um, it's by a filmmaker named Paul Pawlkowski. Um, and okay. basically it's about, uh, yeah, Polish uh, like group of artists and like government people who like start this uh, school for children, like this art school. And this is like right before Stalin takes over uh, Russia and starts like oh, wow. this communist, you know, uh, spread. Um, wow. And so it's basically this one of the artists, like the staff members forms this relationship, this like very, you know, toxic, inappropriate relationship with the student. And so we follow that relationship while we're following the take Stalin's takeover of, of you know, the regime in Europe and um, it's shot in black and white. It's gorgeous. Um, it's like the, the style is a little like Wes Anderson-y, just like there's a lot of symmetry and like just, you know, gorgeous framing. Um, and the performance- is it, is it uh, What'd you say? Is like when when did it come out? Like, is it newer uh, or older? Or? It came out in twenty eighteen, so it's pretty new. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's a great one. That sounds really cool. Cold War. Um, What'd you say it was called? Cold, Cold War. War. Yeah. Um. Okay. It's on my list. so it's so gorgeous, and it's it's this like very dysfunctional love story amidst this you know backdrop of war, which is always like very interesting um yeah and yeah for yeah. sure That's there's cool. also a great uh i'll say one more and then we can get back to whatever the fuck we were talking about um but uh <laughs> the uh, there's a french animated film from 2010 called the illusionist um and it follows it follows a uh like older magician who he's still making his rounds around like Europe trying to do these magic shows. He's making less money because 
we're on the cusp of the 60s. So, you know, the Beatles are coming in. We have rock and roll. And so vaudeville is dying. And Mm -hmm. he, in one of the cities, I think in a city in Ireland, he meets this uh, young girl who ends up coming with him on his tour and assisting him. And they have a father-daughter relationship that's very beautiful. Um, And it's just... It's just a very beautiful, uh, lovely movie about like, you know, aging, uh, sort of change the change of eras and what that brings for a person who was once, you know, successful and now their yeah. art, their artistry is basically, you know, rejected now. Um, and yeah. so it's a really obviously not for children, <laughs> but it's this beautiful French animated film uh, that I think that everybody should see. It's like nobody's seen it though, but it's it's awesome. Where's that? Um, I don't know where that is. You might have to like rent it or something, but- I'll look into it. Yeah, it's, it's like very worth it. Um, but speaking of animated film, just kind of like getting back to I, I know we've talked like this whole time pretty much about like superhero movies but like I feel like you can't talk about a superhero movie and then an animated movie and then not bring up Spider-Verse like oh it was, yeah. dude like, oh, yeah. that the big time like shaped me for sure like that I, I think the whole style of that movie like the animation style the soundtrack the like swag that it has like that yeah. whole yeah it's got such confidence it's brimming with confidence yeah and and like that's miles you know like they they told the the story of miles like so well and um i've been obsessed i've seen it like i've probably watched it five or six times now like i've seen it so many times because the animation alone like plot aside and everything the animation alone is worth watching it six times like it is so so dope it's so and they combine so many different styles of animation there are some frames where there's like eight different styles of animation in like one frame you know i know that's crazy and it I the, it one best best animated film didn't it yes yeah i thought so. that was one of those that was one of those where it was like if it didn't win like like thumbs up <laughs> yeah because i think its biggest competition was like incredibles 2 and I was oh, like, yeah. nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Incredibles though, Incredibles like, I, I only saw the second one, I think once or twice, maybe. But like the first one, I just rewatched the first Incredibles again. And I forgot, like, I used to sit in my room and like ri- literally like watch that movie back to back over and over again for like hours. Like it's- I loved the movie. It is a. Uh, I, I thought I would crash. I would sprint everywhere. Like I would try to. Like, I mean, that was I another you, one of those. I bet you stuff. really looked like Dash as a kid. Oh, for sure, with the blonde hair, dude. And like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely looked like him a little bit. And I, but I wanted to be him. Like, I, I don't know what it was about like superhero movies, especially when I was younger. But like, after watching them, I felt so like, I always felt so energized and so powerful and inspired and like so confident that I could just like do anything. I was invincible. Like I was, the, I was a superhero after I watched those movies. And like, as a kid, like, you know, everybody has like their family issues and stuff that they go through too. And so when you get like an escape like that, yeah. where you have something that's like impacting you in such a way where it makes you like really feel good and fresh and new like it's so addictive you know you just want to keep like chasing that feeling and I think that's probably what it was about like superhero films that I has like kept me obsessed with them all these years is like they've always consistently been like a source of like energy for me you know like I get out of a superhero movie and I'm like I can fucking do anything and I think one of the reasons why Marvel has endured over the last like 12 years it's been going is because they figured out around winter soldier when that came out that we can't just make superhero movies we have to make Mm -hmm. genre movies that happen to feature superheroes so when you 
when you look at something like a Winter Soldier, that's a crime, uh, or that's like a political thriller that happens to be a superhero movie. And then you look at yeah. Guardians, that's a space opera. You look at Ant-Man, that's a heist movie. Um, yeah. You know, uh, freaking like Homecoming, that's Guardians coming, coming to Bay. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. Um, or even like, you know, Black, Black Panther, that's like a family drama, you know, that yeah. like, just happens to have people with powers be about this family who were yeah, yeah. who's like runs oh a country <laughs> yeah yeah dude black panther was something else too rip chadwick yeah how about that dude you know how you about that um i couldn't believe it i've because i i've been a huge huge fan of him since uh have you ever Jackie. seen get, get on up Mm -mm. so he played james brown in that and uh oh. so i you gotta watch that movie he's amazing in it um and the list. <laughs> sweet um and that was that was the best performance that he had given and then he just did this movie that just released on netflix called uh ma rainey's black bottom have you heard of that yeah. yes it's really good yeah. and it's the best thing he ever did. It's really yes, his performance is sensational. Um it's like completely it's it's one of those like yeah, swing for the fences like huge theatrical like performances, but it's it just it's so good. It's completely Damn. uh immersive and captivating and all of those things. Did you like that movie as a whole? I did. I did. Um, Viola Davis is tremendous as always. Um, yeah. The other... Denzel directed it. No, he produced it. Oh. Uh, yeah. Who directed? Uh, George C. Wolfe, who's mostly known for like theater stuff. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. That makes sense. Because it's based on yeah. a, it's based on an August Wilson play. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, but it's 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 a very it's very good. Yeah. Cool. I'll have to check that one out too. Yeah, man. I wish I had like more specific examples of like movies that shape me, but there's there's so many. Like, you provided no, you 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 definitely provided some for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. We uh. And I know there's 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 definitely some that I'm missing too. But like for whatever reason, the superhero genre just like jumps out at me. But I know that there's there are other movies. I can't I can't think of any. But I'll, I know if I I'll, like I'll bring one up um, that yeah. I that I love. Um, mm -hmm. That was definitely uh, formidable for me. I actually saw it this year thanks to. Uh, our our uh, former professor Lenny Leibowitz, uh, because I did a uh, independent film study with him, so I watched like a ton of movies. Um, oh, that's awesome! And my favorite of all the movies that I saw of that he had me watch was called uh, The Third Man, um, and it's a noir from 1949, and it's about this like writer named Holly Martins who comes to um, Vienna after World War II. And he comes to the American sector of Vienna to be with his uh, friend from school who is offering him a job. And he comes to Vienna only to find out that his friend has died. Um, oh, no. So he spends much of the rest of the movie trying to figure out ultimately what happened to him. And it's that sounds like a Lenny movie. Yeah, it's it's a perfect film noir in terms of like, but it's also like an unconventional film noir because it's kind of quirky, kind of funny. Like there's like the first half is is relatively lighthearted. It's only until the second half when we sort of realize the darkness of the story and like mm -hmm. the sort of so what, 
Uh, Sorry, well, no, finish it. I was, I was jumping ahead. Say the real world like consequences of some of the actions of the characters like oh. you know but before that it's it's a relatively light-hearted sort of like whodunit romp that sort of evolves into something greater um yeah but yeah. that yeah it's a <laughs> what about it like like is that is that style like kind of like the the initial like kind of buys you in with the the lightheartedness. Well, yeah, because it's very it's a very inviting movie. I mean, the first shot is of a. Do you know what a, what a zither is? It's like kind of like a guitar, but it's like face down. So the first shot of the movie is a zither, and it's just a zither being strummed, and it's you hear the music of the zither, like doing this little like ditty. And so it's like very like warm and inviting. Um, yeah. And like, yeah. that's how the film opens. And it opens also with this narration of this unnamed man who you never meet. Turns out it's the director. Um, and he's like, oh, I, I never knew Vienna before the war. And it's like very funny and like, you know, uh, <laughs> like character -y. Um Yeah. And, and like, yeah, a lot of the, characters you meet are like very quirky very unconventional like say very like charming funny things um but ultimately i think so yeah i, I was drawn in by the because i you know i love that kind of like i love like quirky side characters who are like weird and bizarre and like i love when movies are are playful and so i i, I was you know i bought into that immediately but then what elevated it for me was as the story progresses, the twists and turns that, that come are genuinely surprising, um, genuinely like compelling. And there is a final 20 minute, I guess I'll call it an action set piece, but there's basically a final 20 minute like action set piece that is one of the most mm -hmm. thrilling things definitely I've ever seen um damn so, a little bit of everything yeah it's it really it's funny it's dramatic it's very romantic there's a there's a, a really great sort of love triangle um and it's also really exciting uh you know and it's 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 a great mystery on top of all of these things you're just guessing and, and wondering what's going to happen the whole time um what but is I, it called again the third man man you got me hooked dude so many so many suggestions i'm excited to get back into this yeah no for sure but i i think uh it, it was very influential for me and in how i view movies now because the style the way it was filmed and shot is mm. like so immaculate and so calculated that when i watch movies that aren't like up to that standard i'm like yeah I'm like what the fuck like you didn't even try like <laughs> you know um but yeah man that there's something there's something to be said for like i mean it's it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier like the preparation that goes into these to to this stuff like and i mean from you know it can be as small of a movie as the third man i mean i'm assuming it's small like it's pretty at least small. it's older so yeah, it's pretty small yeah um but like it can go from any scale like the these tiny like indie films to like these huge mega million dollar like you know budgets like if there's the preparation and the specificity the detail to go into these movies like it's hard to make a bad movie unless you have a bad script like if you have a, a decent script and then you put everything you have into it yeah like it's really hard to to not feel something at the end of the day right you know? and and go that's what i love so much about movies is because they're so adaptable and they're so like variable and they like they can touch anybody and everybody just you know they can from work like it's just it's creative like preparation that goes into it and, like the, col yeah. the collaborative process that goes into movies it's it's such a cool environment and yeah to go off a little bit what you said with the comparison between like an indie and a blockbuster because I know that there's like, some people like to have the conversation of like, oh, like blockbusters aren't real films. And it's like, no, they are. It's just, yeah. 
because oftentimes there are lots of indie films that are worse than blockbusters. It's just like you said, if you come in with the preparation, you come in with the work, you know what you're doing, you have a good script, good actors, good crew, then yeah, you can't fail, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that's, and yeah, I mean, it's also like the, the seeing like the final product of the movie is always really exciting but like i love seeing the behind the scenes stuff too where like you're watching everybody like learning and adjust and collaborate on the fly and stuff and you're getting to see like you know the stunts or like they're talking about specific shots that they needed to figure out or rigs that they needed to set up in order to get the right thing like it's so cool watching these professionals like these people who are so good at these creative jobs working together to create this like amazing piece of art that you see at the end of it so like i enjoy the process as much as the product most of the time because yeah the process just as complex and like problem solving well that's it's very i mean it's very similar to theater like what you just described you know i mean it's because i yeah i love i love the process i love i love getting into a rehearsal room and just like figuring shit out and just trying shit. Uh, yeah, and it, it, like, it shocks me that like people, so, it shocks me that some people like aren't as into the process. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like the process is everything. You know what I mean? It, like, it and is. so, yeah. But I guess some people are more product oriented, but that's fine. Yeah. And that's, and that's honestly like, uh, like as a, like, as a creator like as a if like i wouldn't call myself a filmmaker yet because i haven't made a film but like you know just someone that's like trying to get some like create some professional looking content out there it's a really difficult like game to play like balance to find because you have to be like as a director you know this you have to be concerned about the product so that it's understood like you have to be focused on like yes and make sure that it's digestible but you but you can't, can't get too lost. You the can't fix it on that. Yeah. Yeah, because then you lose the nuance and the and the juice of of the actual of the process. You know. Well, uh, so like it's a really weird balance to find. Yeah, there's a great quote that um, Orson Welles said. He said that uh, directors are. He said, "I like to think of a director as." The man who, of course, I don't like that he said the man, but I'll just say the quote. Um, The man who presides over accidents. (laughs) That is a good Uh, one. Because basically, he's like, you're trying to find these these divine accidents everywhere you look, you know? Oh, yeah. Because, like, when you, yeah, if you stick to the plan all the time, it's not going to be spontaneous. It's not going to be interesting. It's not going to have life, you know? You Absolutely. need that real there, for sure, a hundred percent. Because I mean, and so there's a moment in the uh, in the music video I did for Noah, where like at the, it's at the very beginning of the thing, like uh, the line he says, "Balloons are deflated," and then yeah. like three balloons, balloons like kind of fall down. Yeah. The it was a complete accident. Like we, there was like we. Uh, that was an accident. It all it initially like the idea was. Oh, an accident, okay, so, okay, okay. We were we were shooting and we were like pushing in on the camera and uh we like bumped into a balloon, like a balloon just like breezed in the way and we like bumped into it and it like cut off like half of the shot and it looked really fucking cool. Yeah. And I was like, that was sick. You like grab some balloons and just like drop them right when he says this. And so that's like exactly we that's... didn't have enough hands on deck. That's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. We talking. didn't have enough hands on deck. Me, it was Ben, the camera operator, and then it was um, we had like one other technician, like put because we had a dude. You would have you would have loved that process, like shooting that video. It was so fun. There was we had like a big like trolley cam, so we were like pushing this this cart essentially, like with the camera on it. Um, and so Ben was like operating the camera. The technician was like pushing this dolly, and. Uh, I was like directing it and stuff, but we didn't have enough hands on deck to like have people like dropping the balloons, changing the lights, like pushing the camera, working the camera and doing all this stuff. So I would like, I called action, Noah started, they started pushing the camera. I ran over, grabbed some balloons, dropped some balloons, ran back over, 
Noah's still like performing. I grabbed like this lights and I changed the lights real quick. Like I'm calling out different shit. It was so fun. But like, it's those little things like that where like, you know, you bump into some balloons and you decide like, oh, we got to keep that. Or yeah. like, and there is one time like a light cut out accidentally on like a, a, the climax of the song. And I was like, that was dope. Let's keep that. And like, mm -hmm. we figured out how to do it like efficiently and effectively. And yeah, so I really, I, I get that. It, yeah. Uh, like a good quote. <laughs> wonderful, man. Well, yeah. man, we could talk all day, but I think, I think that, that about wraps it up. All right. Yeah. It was such a pleasure, my dude. Dude. Such yeah. Thank you for setting this up, for having me on. It was yeah. it's always so fun talking to you about anything, especially cinema, but yeah miss you so much miss you too man all right guys thank you for watching this was the films that shaped us all right bye y'all